I was just scratching Stella's stomach and it made me think about something because, you know, she's a big old girl. And so it's cute, but it also is kind of like, you know, a little bit like you need a black box to put over some parts because she's so big and she has an extremely large orifices in her body. <laughs> like, and she loves to like uh, lay on her tummy and she just spreads everything wide open like, and starts rolling around like, oh, scratch me some more, scratch me some more. And, you know, she's really big and she's got rolls and stuff. You know, you can get in some places where she probably is sweaty and hasn't had, and so you scratch real hard, you know. She loves under the chin, under her arms, her tummy scratched. And, you know, places she can't even reach herself. And the thing is about it is... I just finished scratching her. She, I, it, I think she thinks I'm her little slave. But, um, you know, while she was sick, this was something that I had noticed is that she felt so much like shame or like she, it seemed like really she felt shame that she wasn't a hundred percent. She was confused. She didn't understand. I, it seemed like it was like the kind of shame where just don't feed me again. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going to die here. Just don't look, you know, that's what I kept picking up on. And I kept going, you're okay. It's just pain, honey. You're okay. You're going to get better. You're just sick. You're going to get better. I kept telling her and telling her and telling her. But when she would get up, she would tuck her tail between her legs all the way. And then she would walk with her head down with such like, oh, I'm just, don't even look at me. I'm, I'm hideous. And, you know, and it's not the same thing as like the tail up and wagging. When you read their body language, let me let her out. Hold on. I got to finish this. Oh, okay. Just throw the nose down. Excuse me, please. I'm goes over. I want some, knocks the bells off the door. She starts hitting them so hard. She knocks them off the door. I open the door and she turns a little circle and goes back in. I wasn't trying to go outside. Ugh. Ugh. So anyways, um, so the tail between the legs and, you know, and I, I have also watched this body language, you know, and she'll go out to the fence. She'll go running out, you know, and people get so scared. The other day I was outside doing something and a woman was walking and she seemed super sad, super depressed and just down. And like, I just need to go for a walk. And so she was walking, but you could tell her energy was very inside of herself. And she was kind of distracted. And all of a sudden Stella started barking. She got so scared, she jumped. And then she turned around immediately and went the other way, like this dog was going to come out and get her and kill her or something. And I, it's just, it's because people don't pay any attention to the body language that, you know, so sitting there jumping, wagging her tail, barking, like so excited. And, um, it, you know, but they don't read that. But so to me, you know, in this, thing when she has her tail tucked between her legs you know and then when she's feeling good she's like exposing everything just to open it all up and it was like that is kind of like a vulnerability like here I am I'm exposed you could do anything to me you could hurt me in any way but I trust you because I love you and I just I, I don't know I just found the whole thing kind of interesting this morning, I've been up. I, this morning, I had a really hard time waking up. I have no idea why. I know I was having some really weird dreams. Like I was someplace just, and I've only got little flashes that I'm just kind of like, what, was it? what the fuck? Where was I? What was happening? And I, I, I have no idea. But um, I feel super, super out of it. Like if Stella woke me up. And I did not want to get up. And she just went and stopped. And I, when I got up, I was just like grunting and groaning, sitting here just like, oh, oh my God, I just need sleep. Like I have a horrible headache and I just feel so drained, like mentally, emotionally. Like I feel like somebody has just taken my energy out of me. And it is like, man, your body feels so heavy to move around, you know, when you don't have energy like that. And so anyways, I just feel so tired and so out of it. 
Like, and I know I say this all the time, and it just, it seems like it's just building. And I, I just feel so certain that it's about to be shifting and going the other direction. Especially, oh, I was so excited about this, is um, the um, Crown or whatever, I think it's the Associated Press, put out a story that the Buckingham Palace has a big announcement today in regards to the Queen's health. Is it going to be just another thing where she's just going to stay home? She's in ICU now. We're just going to, you know... Is it more of this bullshit or are they going to finally make the announcement? So if they make the announcement, that's a huge marker. And that's leading us. I mean, like the shift is going to be coming. And so, and don't forget, these people are going to fight this. They're going to be like, they've got no problem flying planes into buildings. Like they'll do whatever it takes to cover their asses and to keep us in place. So, you know, just because there's a shift doesn't mean it's over. Not until the announcement is of uh, that these people are in jail and we start watching the the trials on TV. Then we'll know that it is safe, that our water, our air, you know, that those things are safe again. Because, it, it, you know, they've got to take down the people who are poisoning us in the people had, you know, I mean, just like any kind of parasite had, you know, gone into every crevice of our society to destroy us from the inside. And, you know, and they've used all things of our mind against us. That's, you know, why CIA was so busy studying about how to control our minds, the psychology and, you know, what, what they use drugs for, all of it. It is all to control us. So, um, I, this morning, um, I went on TikTok. I, I feel super out of it. Like, I think I've only seen a couple of them, I guess. Um, one of the big things I thought was good news as well was, um, Russia has pulled out of the Antarctic Treaty. So that's good because all of this is a domino thing. And Russia was the first one. I mean, like this stuff kept going on and going on and they keep dragging it out. You know, even though the, the banks have no money, all of this stuff that they are dragging all of this stuff. And then that's why Russia just went full in like, you know, well, we don't use y'all's money anymore. We're on our own. Y'all can't buy stuff from us unless you have gold. And you know, well, we're heading over the Antarctic wall. Like they're just going to keep on going to the rest of us. They're just like, wait, what? We want to go. <laughs> wait, we don't want to be slaves, you know, but, and the, there are so many people who still think the crane of you as the good guys. It's like, you know, that's just, it's just sad how many people are being so misled by the programming. You know, they just lie to people and show them footage. I mean, they could show them fucking movie footage from a movie and the people wouldn't even know. Be like, oh, that looks familiar. I'm sure that's real. That's really happening. Like that happened in a movie in 1999. So they just, it's all just lies. I mean, they're so sophisticated. Now they can just go in and create on a screen the images that they want us to see, you know, so... All of this stuff is total bullshit. I mean, and I saw a clip recently where it was somebody was talking to the people in the crane of you and how much they appreciate um, Putin because he's saving them. Because the, um, the other guy, he's a horrible beast and he is killing them. He uses them as lab rats. And, you know, I mean, those people, it's just kind of weird. You know, that my grandpa, I, I wish I knew more of the story, you know, and, you know, I could ask him now because I know he's one of my guides. I know he is an important person in this whole, my whole um, mission and I could have, but that is always where I start feeling like, am I filling in the blanks? Am I just thinking this because I want to think it? Is this, is this really coming from him? But um, that is why, you know, I used a medium before too. But the, um, it is just as weird because, you know, he left there to get away from this stuff. And now here I am talking about this stuff, but you know, we are all lab rats and it, there has been places, I mean, Germany in the forties, 
who knows how long with the crane of you because they have been carrying on for a long time. I mean, I had seen that footage. I was supposedly 1918 when they uh, starved. I, I was like, I, it seemed like it was huge numbers, you know, so I don't want to exaggerate. It could be 200 million. It could have been 200,000. It was a huge amount of the population, I'm sure, that they killed off in this famine that they did. They just, they just, uh, these people just kill people. I, I've said before, it's, it's, it's areas, it's communities. It's like, they've been killing small towns right, right in front of us. And we haven't even noticed wiping out entire cities. There's one I just saw and it is a dairy farm that was dumping whey. They got a permit to dump whey. And then they decided that they were just going to start dumping milk. And so they went to their dump spot that is near this other guy's farm and started dumping. How many times have we seen this shit in the fucking movies? Start dumping the, the stuff illegally, no permits, just dumping chemicals and stuff. And now there's this big lake of rotten milk that is putrid smelling. It's got disease accumulating. They don't know if it's how much has seeped into the ground and going into other people's water sources with all of whatever, probably so much bacteria and disease. And, and then the chemicals that they put in, and then that leaches up into people's food, into their water. And then the people end up with cancer and disease. And then the corporations say, well, what in us? <laughs> what in us? Well, that's what they've been doing to small towns and cities for a long time. I mean, it, it, I mean, to the miners, to all of the people, when the people were first, because if you think about it too, when the settlers started going, you know, and just crossing the Appalachian would have been rough. I could see why a lot of people go, hell no, we're not going any further. This is good. <laughs> we'll stay here. And so many people went up there and started forming communities and then, you know, these snakes, these snake oil salesmen came in and offered a better life, more education, more money, get out of this poverty, get out of this. When, when what they were really having was a real life, they were really getting to live and they had real connection and they had real communities, but you know, they wanted to break that apart in, in, in that movie that I just watched, they showed that so well too, because it was back in the thirties. I think she was born in the 30s, and then this was supposed to be setting in like the 50s in rural North Carolina. And, um, you know, one of the guys, he didn't want to be a shrimper like his dad. He wanted to go to the city. He wanted to get an education and get a good job and get out of poverty and stuff. They didn't know. Like, now we've seen that you go into the cities and you're in a trap. You're just a slave. You can't get out of it. I mean, I just saw footage of um 15 miles stretch in portland i think he said it was like 32nd or 37th something like that um of of road and the whole way down is campers and cars campers and cars campers and cars tents piles and piles of garbage i mean piles of garbage the size of a giant old rv just garbage everywhere I mean, people are just have gathered together and are living on sidewalks in campers, cars, tents. And I still say, you know, I mean, they've got to get out of the cities, but they all still think they need those resources. You know, everybody is so reliant on the system. They're so scared. You know, well, what can we do? We have to stay here. We need food. It's like, yeah, but you can eat weeds. You don't have to stay there. You can go out and start just... You can literally, I mean, you can look up the laws in all the different places because people don't understand about this. The only reason I do is because I was talking to somebody it happened to, and it was in Spokane, and um, it was a guy, I think it was, um, he lived in Mount Spokane, so he lived up going up towards the ski lift. And he had a lot of property. And this is why we don't ever need more property than we can manage. Just just this whole, I own property. I own 10,000 acres. You don't own the earth. You, if you can't take care of 10,000 acres, then what the fuck are you going around buying it? So this is, this is the reprogramming our minds. 
So this guy who was telling me, he was talking about, you know, his acreage and then his acreage butted up against another guy's acreage and that guy had a whole bunch of acreage. So there was all this acreage nobody's looking at, nobody's managing, nobody's paying any attention, but they own it. <clears throat> it's theirs. So this fire chief, the fire chief of Spokane, he started going out to several, this, this person who was telling me this, this was like the fourth or fifth person. This, this fire chief had been through the court system several times doing this. He would go out and come up with a place in this open acreage that nobody's paying attention to. And since nobody's paying attention, he could go in and start working the area. Start building it up, like plant a little garden, maybe build a little shed, start building it and taking care of it. And then these people come over and they go, hey, get the hell off my yard. What are you doing here? This is my property. He goes, not anymore. It's mine. And they take him to court. Well, the people who own it with their deed lose it because this guy now has taken care of it. So now it goes to him. That's the homesteading laws. That's the laws that that um, protect us. And so, you know, this guy was just like kind of outraged. You know, well, I paid for it and I bought it. And, you know, and this other guy and he lost his and stuff. And, um, and this guy didn't know. I mean, I think he took a lot more of the other guys and less of the one. But anyways, they, you know, were outraged, you know, how I, I pay for this and this other guy can just come and take it. But they just don't understand. It is the earth. Nobody owns the earth. You are born. And you are allowed what you need. So what do you need? What do you need to take care of you, your own, your, your family? What do you need? You need an acre? You need five acres? You need what you need. Whatever you can set up. You don't need everything past that. You know, they pile us on top of each other. So we feel like we need more space. But really, we don't need everything. We just need to not be on top of each other. But when you go out, you only need the space that you can manage, that you can take care of. What is there to give you back food or shelter or supplies, whatever it is. And then you have to learn skills inside of you. You have to learn what you have. What's your value? They're fucking, they, they value us as only as slave labor. This really got me to this morning. I started crying. I still haven't told about my stitch, but I will. Um, I started crying. This just hit me hard. I've heard so many people talking about this and I have, so I have no idea why it hit me. Maybe because I'm fucking tired, but, um, about putting your social security number. So you go to this website um, it was like G R I C utility or something like that dot org. And you put in your social security, you put in the search thing, your social security number, and then it pops up all of the people who are trading on you, all the LLCs that are trading on your social security number. And when it popped up and I just saw 16 pages, just going all the way down 16 pages of all of these companies, they're in Canada, they're in Sweden, they're all over the place that are trading on my social security, that I'm just a, a number. And I, I, and I said there was 1,600 of them, 1,600 and something, and I just, I just started crying. Just like, oh my God, this is sick. And when I, the guy who I saw sharing about this, he had 28,000, 28,000. They were trading on him. Like, yeah, and I have no idea, you know, um, and this guy was a black guy. So, you know, when you're doing the stock market, like I said, with the horse races, so you're like, oh, well, this is a good one. <laughs> you know, it's against the odds. So, you know, we're going to give you a 50 to one on that one. So, you know, is that what they're doing? 50 to one on a black guy? I don't know. But it's, it's disturbing whatever they're doing and it's sick and it's, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, that's all we are to these people. And so many people allow that for themselves in their own life. I really think it comes down to how much abuse are you willing to take and because in your awareness, like, are you paying attention? What's going on in the world? But it is certainly about the abuse people are willing to take. And so many people just keep taking it, kick them in the teeth, and they'll just keep taking it. 
And that is um, <clears throat> what holds them back. They don't want to see what's wrong in the world. They just want to live in their fairy tale. And, you know, at some point you have to wake up and see what's happening. You have to see there's 15 miles. This is one city in one area, one road, 15 miles of people who are living in the streets. We have got so many people living in the streets. We've got so many people hungry. The amount of footage of people who are on drugs that have just, like I said, they're just bent in half, just standing there like somebody needs to put the battery back in. It is um, it's sad. And I think, you know, for sure, I would say most of the people who are drug addicts on the street, most of the people who are just bent over like that, they're not, they're, they're not going to be here much longer. You know, especially we're moving into more with the weather. I mean, I, I just, I, I think a lot of those people are going to transition. And then, you know, I'm always looking at stuff on the soul level and it can be so multi, you know, it can be so many things, you know, so I can't say this is the thing with all of them, but it just, um, it just is sad because I know some of them, it is because they just don't have that fight. They don't have that resilience. And so they go through that life and then they go to the review and they see it. And then, you know, you come back in and try and learn the lessons again. And, you know, because you're always looking for who you are. You're always trying to understand yourself. And it's so easy to go into these these games, these stories and get caught up in the story. But some people come in to play the role, to be that, to be the wall for you to bounce back off of. So you can't just go around thinking, oh, well, you're just, you're, you're asleep. You're never going to, you know, it's, everybody's playing a role that you don't know. You don't understand. It's like the mystery. So you, that's why it's ridiculous for us to judge each other. But, you know, there is a lot of people who will transition over and they will have learned huge lessons from this world, from this reality. So it isn't, it isn't a sad thing. It isn't, you know, like tragic. I mean, there's so much stuff right now that feels so tragic and it feels so sad and people just transitioning, especially just so abruptly and, you know, whole families and stuff. But really, when you consider the the beauty of it, too, a whole family leaving together, like, ah, it gets me like I feel like I'm going to start crying. It's really a beautiful thing. And it hurts the people who are left behind, but those people you know, they all left together or, you know, there, I've heard of some where there's ones that are just leaving days apart and stuff. So, you know, it really is a, a beautiful thing, even though it's, it's hard for the rest of us to witness. There's just a lot of tragic things, you know, that we consider to be horrible and devastating, um, that are going on. I mean, the, the amount of people that are, keep going missing, the amount of people who are being attacked it is, um, but those are all their souls stories. Those are the role that they came into play. There's nothing, nothing at all happening that wasn't meant to happen. That's the only way something can happen is as if it's meant to happen. And that's something you can always rest your hat on. You, you don't have to try and force things because if it's meant to be, it will be. You don't have to make anything be. You just have to relax because there's a lot of things that we come up with that we think, oh, well, this should be, this should be, I can make this happen. And then you just run in circles because you can't make something happen that's not supposed to happen. And when you do just tune into yourself, then it will lead you into the path of, you know, what will be. And you aren't just living in the programs trying to force something that will never be. So, you know, that is the beauty of connection to self. But, um, and this stitch, I, I, this, this I thought was so important because this was a young guy and he was saying stuff about, you know, older people are, ju are judgmental towards the younger people thinking the younger people don't want to work and that they're lazy and stuff like that, which is, it's just, it's ridiculous. And, you know, and also in this generational thing, like where we all learn from each other. This is the hand of God for these generation, for this to be all these kids to be born to say, no, this, this system sucks. 
I can't get ahead. I'm not going to go to work. Why would I go to work? Why do I want to be a slave? We needed that to happen. We needed that shift. I mean, and then this guy is saying all these old people, you know, just go to work, just do this. Like all of the people who are just like, well, I'm a slave, be a slave. We're all slaves. Just jump on board and be a slave. It's like, fuck off, dude. I don't want to be a fucking slave. I want to live a life. I'm here to live, man. And, you know, but that is, that is some obstacles for people to come together. Like these older people need to recognize like, yeah, man, my life's almost over. And here I've just lived it just to try and get ahead and never got ahead and never. What is success? What is being ahead? And how many people, when they're on their deathbed, are sitting there going, I wish I would have done something different with my time. Time, that's the value, your time. And it shouldn't be registered by a clock. The clock was created to register the time to give us 24 hours in a day so they could rob eight of it. And, and on top of the eight, you've got drive time. You've got preparation time. You got to make your lunch. You got to get ready. You got to take a shower. So literally your whole life revolves around this job, eight hours of your day to give you some pay that will never get you ahead. And then people want to judge when people are saying, hey, wait a minute, this is not working. This is not working. So it is everybody to come together. Like the older people need to learn from the younger people and the younger people have got to quit feeling judged. They got to trust their instincts. They got to follow the path. They got to know what's right and what's wrong and then go in that direction. They got to stop worrying about like, well, they said this and they said that and they're being mean to me. Fuck it. Who cares? Who cares who's being mean to you? Know your truth. Go. Follow your path. Do what's right. Because we are in a time of change. And no matter if it doesn't make sense to 99% of the public and it only makes sense to you, know the truth. Know the direction we're headed. Trust your instincts. Trust your gut. And remember, there is nothing wrong. Like You could pile in you know, 10 people in a one room apartment. I mean, you got, I mean, soon it's going to be a half of the people are living in the streets. Like, you know, I feel like some sort of aristocrat because I have shelter, you know, it is, and you know, it's temporary. Anything can happen. Yesterday, the wind was going crazy. It all of a sudden felt freezing. The wind just picked up. It was whipping. I was like, well, here we go. And I think whatever they were trying, it didn't, it didn't work. Because they keep trying to merge these systems to create this atmospheric explosion, you know, tornadoes, hurricanes, everything they can do. I mean, they're fucking bombing volcanoes. And from under the ground, they're bombing fault plates. I mean, they're doing everything they can to destroy this world. And probably part of it is to cover their asses so that we're not, we're so busy focused on our pain and suffering that we don't have time to notice what the fuck they're doing and you know another thing i feel really certain about this is that they created this prophecy i mean there's always been prophecy right we've got all this prophecy uh the the harvest the the solar flash uh, all the things that the the ancient people have left behind to tell us but you hear so many people talking about revelations and the bible and you know, and I've heard Hopi prophecy and stuff like that. So there's always prophecy, but there's a specific things that it says in the Bible. And these people edited the Bible. They put in the information they wanted. They translated it to meet their criteria. So now we have all of this stuff happening on the planet that is in prophecy. How much of it is they, they gave you the, the stuff? They gave you the words. Now they're creating the they're creating the prophecy. And so then, you know, we've got lakes of blood or whatever, all of you know, all in, you know, now the bay, all of the fish dying, and um Poland, all the fish dying, you know, all of this stuff that they're doing. But look at when we have the prophecy, which so many people are talking about, and then the things happen, it goes into full blown panic. I'm not kidding you. It goes into full-blown panic or 
The other thing is Jesus is coming. Jesus will save us. Don't you worry. Nobody worry. Jesus is on his way. He will be here in a minute. I, He told me last night. I heard him. He told me. He's coming. He's about to be here. He's right here. And it's like, so it's either wait on somebody to come save a couple billion people or, or, you know, panic, total panic it is, it's just, it's all misleading people from the truth. The truth is within you and you got to man. They are trying to create this fear and panic. So that all the, the people are like, oh my God, the world's about to end. It's about to end. It's going down. I, I literally see people sharing this stuff. There was a, a girl who, um, I don't remember where she worked. She worked somewhere and a guy came in, she said, and he had on a tag that he was a NASA employee. And I, maybe he was in science or something. I can't remember what. But so she said to him, you know, something about, is is this the end? Is there anything we need to worry about? Or something like that, you know? And she said, and he was, you know, like this inside the place. And then when he started to leave and she asked him, he turned around. He took it down, got a serious face. And he said, yes, this is the end. I don't remember what else he said. But it is not the end. And I don't know, is it just because science doesn't understand spiritual? They don't understand what anything beyond the physical? I don't know. It, you know, I, it's a limitation of a lot of these people who just focus on science don't think there's anything outside of science. And science is a manufactured uh, man's way of trying to... Um, manipulate its its environment its world it isn't natural or nature and it's it's just odd because why don't they see that there is a a natural order to things and why don't they understand that there's earth cycles you know when they take earth cycles and then they manipulate and attack certain things like i said bombing volcanoes and shit like that going in seeding uh, chemicals up in the thing to create rain and and then changing these weather systems and creating these uh these systems to hit into each other to create these disasters like they're doing that stuff but there is still an earth cycle there's cycles to this place and we're in a cycle. Things are picking up because we're going into a time of change. And everything is swirling. It is time and space. It is everything is in movement. And it's in the movement of change. And that's why everything feels like it's just spiraling out of control. And you don't know what to do. So you have to go in and remain centered. The problem is, is so many people haven't healed yet. And so this is just bringing up all of this stuff. And they don't know what to do with it. They've been trained. You know, don't think about that. And, and then you've got these spiritual people. Just go for a walk. You'll feel so much better. Just sit with your crystals in your hand and drink some mint tea and everything will be fine. And it's like, no, you have to take the time to focus on the pain. That's how you release this energy outside of your energy body is you got to release it. You got to purge out the pain. You don't ignore it. You don't distract yourself. You don't just find a coping skill and just, no, I'm just going to drink all day. So I don't have to think about that. No, you want to dive in. Think about it. Focus on it. Feel your pain. Release it. That's how you release it. You feel it. You go in deep. Don't just go to the surface. Don't just stay on the top. Go in deep. You know, go into, you know, what, what, uh, like for me, you know, uh, I think, me with my, um, you know, my, I had a very chaotic family, a very chaotic family life. Like it, I, I was the reason I related to that little girl of feeling so alone, you know, feeling like you just don't know what to do, especially it was like an added pressure to be the oldest of four kids. And then to have, you know, these parents that just seem like, it felt like I needed to take care of these kids. Like, you know, I, I don't know. There's just a lot of dysfunction that can happen in 
families that are full of chaos. And you know what? I just saw Roseanne, somebody was sharing this clip, which also someone shared a clip of um, Brand. And this girl is just going, she's going 100% in on this. Like she's got all these people asking questions and she's in, she's in. And I still say, Russell Brand is not a fucking girl. He is a fucking guy. And some of these people, like, even if a girl transitioned into a guy, she's not going to just keep talking about her, uh, her fake penis is so fucking magical. It just, it is, uh, makes all the girls just so happy. Like he was so, when he, when I very first started hearing about him and he was always like, if you saw his stand up and stuff, he was always talking like that. I don't, I do not think he was a girl. I don't give a shit. And she doesn't give a, she's already made mention of him being tall and stuff like that. It's like, I don't think you're getting it. Like they just, they get so stuck. Maybe he's going to come out. He's a girl and I was wrong. I don't have any problems saying I was wrong. I don't see it. I don't see a girl. But this other clip was Roseanne and she was talking about um, how that they had pushed um, people to get married and have kids because they just wanted breeders because they just wanted more slaves and soldiers. So they were pushing us. Well, now that they can make kids in labs, they don't need that anymore. Now they're taking away people's reproductive rights. They're taking away their abilities to have kids. They're sterilizing people. They've got people taking their kids in. Please, they don't even want to be a boy or a girl. Just change them, you know, take out their uterus, take off that peanut. Oh, they don't need any of that. So that they, and, and that's all by programming. And so then none of these kids can ever have kids. And that decision is made for them well before they understand what life is all about. And someone's making that decision for them. Like, I would not want to be held accountable for that. I'll tell you that. So anyways, that is the push because, and, you know, in the constantly with the, oh, it's climate change, all the... There's not enough resources. It's just it's so much nonsense. Like literally people could just go out and find some property. Like especially all these people with campers and stuff. Go out and find a place that would work. Just park your camper. Get out. Start building fences. Start putting in a garden. Put yourself in a driveway. Put up some solar panels. Set yourself up. And then anybody comes at you. Go in and say, no, you have rights. The earth and you are working together. They can't just kick you off. They, no matter what, it's just, I mean, right now we're fighting against a system of, uh, you know, robots and zombies. And, uh, you know, I mean, even cops, they don't even know what the hell they're doing. You say, oh, you know, no, I'm not a part of your laws. Sorry. They would have no clue. You know, I, oh, well, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You know, we're arresting you. It's like, fuck off, dude. You know what? And I, hopefully this doesn't offend anybody, but it kind of annoys me is, um, I saw this couple, it was like a sweet old couple yesterday out riding their bike. And I was like, oh, that's so cool out riding their bike in a nice evening. And I could see the guy he was the closest up to my driveway. And then on the other side of him, it seemed to be his wife. And so she's an adult woman and she had on a helmet. It's like, dude, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, all of this stuff was just created to put fear into us. Like, oh my God, we rode bikes our whole childhood and we never wore helmets. We weren't fucking just going easy on it either. We're jumping over fucking shit. We're going down hills as fast as possible, racing down hills. At one of my neighborhoods, we would race down the hill and go and see, you know, if you could stop yourself before you hit the electric barbed wire fence. Like, that's the shit we did when we were kids. And now you got these people, oh, I'm scared. Just give me one of these and put me one of these. Maybe I need a couple pads here and there. It's like, maybe you just need to relax and live your life. Because when you go, you're going to go. There's nothing. You can have all, everything on that you want. And if you do fall off and you do get a brain injury, it's because that was supposed to happen because you were supposed to learn by that. It doesn't have anything to do with, well, you should have had your helmet on. That should have been my first priority. No, it's, that was your experience. You came here to experience that because nothing happens. It's not supposed to happen. It's not just happening by accident. It's happening by design. 
And the design is always to make you jump on board to become your best self. But as long as you live in fear and in denial and, you know, isolated you know, because everybody's a danger, you know, nobody is safe out there. And so many people going on social media and thinking like that they can, you know, develop relationships on there and then being sad because it's just all phony and people put up their best fake life that they can and then people feel bad about themselves and then you have all these toxic people on there just ridiculing people and putting people down well it's because those people feel like that about themselves don't put yourself through that and what we really want is real connection and if you're looking for someone to connect to Think about the things you're good at. Think about the things that you like to do. And then find other people who like to do the same thing. And then you will start finding people to enjoy your time with. To build community with. And, you know, I think one of the um, coolest things is those meetups. You know, if you're in a city that has those meetups, go in and look. Find some more people in your area that like to do what you like to do. If it's if it's hiking, if it's book clubbing, if it's um, getting together and just talking, like there's all sorts of groups that are forming and getting together. And, you know, there is somebody out there for you. It is just, you know, we've just been trained to go inside and protect ourselves. And, you know, and it doesn't work. That's, you know, you've got people putting on so much padding to protect themselves. So you've got to become vulnerable. You've got to become humble. You've got to become in love with yourself. And don't let other people's feelings of themselves project on you. Just love yourself. Do your healing. And everything's going to be okay. I'll talk to you later.